Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tyra Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we are going to continue on in a series that I started last week. So if you haven't watched that yet, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that. But what we are going through is we're going through a standing walking progression basically starting from ground zero or from the very, very beginning for anyone who isn't getting out of bed yet or uses a wheelchair primarily to get around, that video is a great place to start. Just a quick review, what we went over were some key areas big picture that I think that are important to focus on early on. Of course, I expand some of those movements, zoom into a few more areas as we get further along in the progression. So there will be more mat exercises that I go through in each progression. However, that being said, there's no mat exercises today. We're basically calling this progression 1B versus jumping into progression two. And that's just because that was a lot of information in the first video. But one other area that most people are dying to do right at the beginning is stand. It's important for so many reasons. Weight bearing, which helps to decrease spasticity. Standing starts to give you better spatial awareness. Standing can help to activate some of the muscles in the lower leg if you're still in the flaccid stage. Standing is good for better hygiene when you're toileting. It's better for your GI system and digestion. And I could go on and on and on of all the benefits of standing, but as soon as possible, you should be doing some form of standing. Now, all that being said, I get messages about this. Rehab stays are getting shorter and shorter until a lot of people are sent home with home health and still at a wheelchair level or still even bed bound in some cases now because those hospitalizations are getting so short. And so a lot of times it's up to you and your caregiver to figure out how to get more standing in. And so hopefully this video will address some of those challenges and some of those barriers as well as show the correct way to stand and go sit to stand, making sure that you're not developing compensatory strategies. And I'll put a couple of links in the description, some videos that I've made of some learned non-use that you wanna try and avoid early on if you're in the early stages. And then also ways to start standing safely when you are in those early stages. So that's a lot of information. Let me stop talking about all that and just get right into it. Before I do that though, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. And now let's go ahead and get started. So as I just mentioned in that very long intro, if you watched last week's video, we went over some mat activity and early weight bearing, but the early weight bearing was still pretty much in a sitting position. And then I was going through that list of the critical areas that I think are important for walking. I did mention weight bearing was one of them, that co-contraction or contraction on both sides of the knee joint and the hip joint are really important so that your knee doesn't buckle and your knee doesn't go into rec or bottom. That's gonna be important today. And then I also talked about how critical that ankle bend or that dorsiflexion is for walking. So. Definitely, if those areas are areas that you're struggling with, especially the ankle and getting weight on the bottom of your feet, definitely stick with that first video. But now that we're sitting and we've done some early weight bearing with that gym ball, I like to take this ex gym ball exercise one step further and now just move to a higher surface. Make sure that that chair that you move to is pushed up against a wall because the higher the chair, the easier it is for that chair to slide out from under you. So safety tip number one is make sure that when we are doing anything where you're sitting on a taller surface, that you do have that surface pushed up against a wall. And now you're gonna kind of do that same forward flexion that we did with the gym ball, only now you're just gonna lean forward and then push your body back to upright. So you're just gonna lean forward and then push your body back to upright. And what this is doing is when you lean forward, it's actually requiring your legs to do a little bit more work so that you don't fall forward. And then of course, when you're sitting back up again, you wanna really try and push down with your legs. For this one, I really like the strap around the knees. A lot of times people will just push down with the uninvolved leg. So really to make sure that you're getting that symmetrical pushing with both legs, I like a strap with a little yoga block in between the feet to really make sure that you're pushing down with both feet. And now sit to stands probably one of the most critical foundational 
exercises that you can learn and so, so important to learn to do correctly in the early, early stages. This is where you're gonna see those first signs of those compensatory strategies start to emerge if they are gonna emerge. So there is a very important progression to do to make, to minimize the chances of you developing some of those compensatory strategies. But before we even get into that, I want to address those of you that cannot stand. And maybe you're using a Hoyer lift or a caregiver is what I call manhandling you and just throwing you from the wheelchair to the bed. I see it all the time or the bed to the wheelchair. or maybe they're putting a slide board down, but they're still kind of throwing you to the bed and then throwing you from the bed back to the wheelchair. I'm gonna go over the proper way to, if I'm a caregiver, I'm gonna go over the proper way to help someone safely without injuring you, but also preparing the body to be able to go sit to stand. So two things if you're a caregiver and you're helping someone that I think are really, really important. One is a gait belt with leg straps on it. So if you are helping someone, you already know that this happens, but when you go to lift them up, what happens? That gait belt just slides up and ends up around their chest. So a gait belt with leg straps, they're pretty reasonably priced. I'll put a link for one in the description below. What it does is it stops that gait belt from sliding up, and then it's all about physics. With that gait belt lower down around the hips, it's just leverage. So you start by blocking the knees. I always, if I'm gonna only block one knee, I always block the knee closest to the surface that I'm transferring to. And then with your other hands, you want them down pretty low on the hips. And then I call it, it's like a vice and a teeter-totter in one. So with your hands behind the hips and your knees on their knees, you're kind of pushing the knees straight and extending the hips a little bit at the same time. And then the teeter-totter component is, is that you're leaning back a little bit using your legs. And when you lean back and you're blocking the knees, you just lift up on the bottom. That blocking of the knees really creates like a pivot point and it makes it a lot easier to get the hips up. Now from here, if you're just gonna go to standing, then you just go straight up. If you're still using a slide board, use the same technique because it does help to encourage weight bearing on the legs. And then you just do little scoots across the slide board. Either way, it saves your back and it's teaching the person that suffered the stroke or the person that you're helping them. It's really preparing their body for standing. So I know I'm probably going to get this question, but which leg, which side do you transfer to? Do you transfer towards the weak side or toward the strong side? That's an individual preference. There's a variety of reasons why one way might work better than the other, but regardless, I'll always block the knee that is closest to the surface I'm transferring to. Now, if someone is super duper low level, they make these things called like a twister disc or a transfer disc, and it actually goes on the floor. Sometimes the feet get all tangled up when you're actually move, doing this little scoot over. So a twister disc basically um, allows the feet to pivot with you. They have some pretty good traction on them so they don't slide. And then you don't have to worry about moving the feet while you're transferring. The ba they basically just stay in one spot and the disc kind of transfers them to get the bottom pointed in the right direction to transfer to the surface that they're transferring to. So that's step one for those of you that are still at the very, very early stages or your very, very low level to help you and your caregiver to do the transfer safely and start preparing your body for standing. Now, the sit to stand progression, I will put a link in the description below of a video I made addressing the most common bad habit that I see with sit to stands and that is 
learned non-use or a compensatory strategy where the involved leg just stays shooting out to the side and you just use your uninvolved leg to do the whole sit to stand. If you really want to make sure that you don't develop that habit or you want to try and break that habit, I recommend you back up a little bit and really do sit to stands in a very slow progression, doing them over and over and over and over again at every single step. So sit to stand, there's a few variations. The best setup is strap around the knees, yoga block between the feet, wide side down. That's step one. If you have a foot that really likes to roll out to the side, you might wanna add a wedge on the side underneath the involved foot. The setup is critical if you do not want to develop a bad compensatory strategy early on. And then you want to start from a high surface. So a countertop height bar stool is a good starting point. The one above that, I don't know what that's called. I think that's called bar height. That's a little bit too tall unless you're like six feet. So if you're six feet or over, yeah, you could probably use a bar height bar stool, but a counter, a counter height bar stool works best. And then you're gonna put your hands on the back of a chair and do a little bottom lift. Now the goal is not to get all the way up because remember what I said about that co-contraction on both sides of the joint? You don't wanna just go all extension, which is really, really common. So the way that you prevent that is you prevent that by leaning forward or staying forward or having your hands down on something. And then the next step is to go down to a lower surface. Now, before you progress down to that lower surface, there are a couple of key things to keep in mind. The first one is, is to really, really, really make sure you're pushing down with both legs. If you need to use a mirror, use a mirror, but make sure that you're not shifted over to one leg. You really wanna make sure that you have even weight on both legs. Once you can do that pretty consistently and your knees are not going back into hyperextension, then drop down to a lower surface. Now, if your knee is immediately going into hyperextension, stay right here and just really work on trying to control that, extend the knee or straighten the leg out without overextending it. Now, there's not really a need yet to lift your chest up. We're just working on really the first half of sit to stand. No one is gonna have any problem lifting their chest up. Everyone always thinks they really need to get their chest up really quickly. I promise you, if you get this first part right and you keep your chest down, you are not gonna have a problem lifting your chest up later on down the road. So really just get the good power and the good push and really figure out how to get your bottom up first. Then drop down to a lower surface and do the same thing. Keeping the chest down, even in this one, this is where people will start to lift their chest up. Remember, the bottom, your bottom is the heaviest part of your body. And so when you lift your chest up, all that weight goes over your bottom and just adds to the amount of weight you have to lift up. So really keep that chest down and keep it forward. I've done a whole video on just a general physics of sit to stand. So you can definitely watch that one to really understand that whole concept. And then again, the goal is to make sure you're pushing with both legs from that lower surface. The strap is critical. If your foot's still trying to jet out to the side and you're still trying to shift your weight over, put another strap down lower, closer to your ankles as well to make sure and keep those feet together. And now that is step one of progression for standing. Now the second step is once you're in standing, figuring out how to slowly load the involved leg. So slowly shift your weight over onto that leg. I still like the strap, I still like the wedge, I still like the yoga block for this activity. Once you feel like you can shift that weight over, now step one is not to just go ahead and pick that uninvolved leg up and put all your weight on that involved leg, but we're gonna do it in a progression. So you're just gonna do a little heel lift. So you're gonna keep your uninvolved toe on the ground and just lift the heel up. That unloads the un uninvolved leg just a little bit and puts a little bit more loading onto the involved leg. And do this as much as you need to. Again, if your knee is going into hyperextension or your knee feels like it's gonna give out on you, 
just stay here and just keep doing that. Use whatever you need to. You can stand in front of the counter for this one. The counter is really nice because it's very stable and very sturdy. Or you can use a walker. I really don't like a one-handed device. Even if you have hemiplegia on one arm, I like both hands to be on something. It just helps your body to start learning that symmetry. When you put something in one hand, um, A, it's gonna be harder to shift away from that thing because most likely it's gonna be in your uninvolved arm. So it's a lot harder to shift that weight over to the involved leg. And B, you're just again gonna learn some compensatory strategies down the road or some learned non-use by leaning onto that assistive device. So either a walker, which is in both hands, or a countertop is my preferred setup for standing. And then once you get really good at that, now you're just gonna stagger your feet and just stand with your feet staggered. Uninvolved leg forward, involved leg back. Again, you're loading that leg, but this is a phase in walking where that uninvolved leg is slightly forward and you're just gonna stand and again, try and stay symmetrical and make sure that that involved leg can support your body weight, not go into hyperextension and not buckle on you. For this one, you can still keep the strap on because it does keep your knees together. You're just not gonna be able to move the foot forward very far, but I still like that strap just for the leg position. And then that is it for this video. I'm stopping it there. The next video is progression two. It is gonna be another pre-gait, but we are gonna move on to actually like a forward backward stepping activity and really challenging that weight on your involved leg just a little bit more. But this was a lot of information. Uh, I know that that caregiver training took up a lot of time, but it is super duper important. So I definitely wanted to make sure and include that. Again, even if you're further along in the walking progression, do this standing, do these sit to stands, because I can guarantee you if you had someone video it, there's nine out of 10 of you where that uninvolved leg isn't gonna have any weight on it and you're just gonna be doing the sit to stand with your involved leg. So come back to this activity, I really like it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. Again, as I mentioned last week, I've gotten a lot of really positive feedback. You guys are leaving comments on the blogs, which I really, really love on my new website. So go to the website, make sure you sign up for the newsletter. There's about 100 of you that have already signed up for that, but I know there's a lot more of you that can really benefit from that. So thank you to the 100 of you that signed up. I hope you've liked the emails so far. I hope they've been informative and helpful and kind of just creating more of a community. So again, if you haven't signed up, go sign up for that newsletter. Work on this exercise all week long. I enjoyed spending time with you all once again, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You all have a great day.